Hello, everybody. So I want to talk about uh, some vectorization features of the Intel compiler that go a little bit beyond the vectorization of uh, simple uh, uh, arithmetic loops. <coughs> so the code samples to which I shall refer here are available for download. Uh, Mike has posted the URL for download. Uh, it, it's also in the slides. So feel free to try them out yourself using the current compiler. So let's go on. Uh, STL containers are a popular um, portable programming method. Uh, they're widely used. Um, people often sort of hesitate as to whether that's compatible with vectorization. They understand how the compiler vectorizes uh, simple loops like the ones we just saw. But when this is all buried in, in uh, uh, C++ class with, with, its own, and with its own special syntax and things, uh, I see a, a lot of people uh, think that that might be preventing vectorization. Uh, it isn't. Uh, this is a little example. The loop is written using iterators over the vector class. Uh, using the, the vector class has a lot of advantages. It provides a lot of additional functionality that you don't get if you just use simple arrays. Uh, in this case, for example, there's no need to pass the vector size explicitly. It's contained within the, within the class. And uh, <laughs> The for loop line looks a little uh, ugly, but um, uh, if you all you need to do is to compile exactly the same way as before, uh, enable the optimization report. We've done it with slightly different switches here, with the same principle, and you see uh, loop was vectorized. Now you know that uh, when you when you're using STL, there's a lot under the hood. There are many little function calls. Uh, and the compiler to be able to vectorize this really does depend on all that lower level stuff getting in line. So this vectorize is fine at all too. But uh, if you were to do this at, uh, at uh, lower, or if you were not to do this within lining, then, then it wouldn't. It does depend on the inlining. And the performance, we shall see the performance in a moment, but it, it, it is quite closely similar to what you get if you're writing arrays explicitly. Now, the Intel compiler uh, versions 15 and 16 support uh, many features of C11. And uh, in particular, C++11 introduced two features that are quite convenient for this sort of programming, uh, especially the auto keyword. Uh, also range-based for loops. So if you look at the code sample here, you see that that long source line for the for loop where you had to specify all the iterators and everything. Now you can simply say auto. And uh, the auto will take the type of, of a loop variable from uh, what you are iterating over. And in this particular case, uh, you can also make this a range-based for loop. So that's what the colon x is doing. It's basically saying just loop over x loop over my vector x. Um, the compiler automatically generates the uh, loop variable when the, the uh, loop limit and uh, creates the loop. So looks a lot less ugly. And uh, you don't have to remember the, uh, the data types yourself. And again, the end result uh, is essentially the same. The, the loop at line six was vectorized. Now, 
Well, I want to talk a little bit about alignment, data alignment. Before I do, I want to make a caveat. <laughs> it's much more important to get your loop to vectorize than it is to get it aligned. The benefits from vectorization are much larger than the benefits from data alignment. Nevertheless, that said, you can often get an additional performance benefit by ensuring that your data are aligned. Um, the compiler has ways to allow you to align arrays, whether they're static or dynamically allocated. Uh, but uh, when you get to aligning elements within classes, and especially in this case, aligning uh, data from a STL vector for which you uh, don't want to touch the source code, uh, it's harder. So we're assuming for now we're compiling for Intel AVX. So for Intel AVX, you would like to align to 32 byte boundaries, the width of the vector register. For Intel SSE, it would be 16 bytes. For Intel Xeon 5 coprocessors, or for AVX 512, it would be 64 bytes. <coughs> so you might think that, OK, we can use the usual feature attribute align, apply that to the de declaration. So here, I've made a def to save space. Um, <coughs> I think I'm missing a line, but never mind. The, you might think you could just use an attribute align directly, or in the case of uh, dynamic allocation, uh, use Intel's align allocator, uh, mmalloc. But, uh, and we'll see this in the sample. But in fact, that doesn't do what you want. What it does, it aligns the class itself. Uh, and you can see this in the test program. But what you really need is to align the data member. You need to align the data you're looping over. So and that's something different. Uh, and in fact, uh, boost uh, versions 1.56 and later provide an aligned allocator that can be used to align the data member. So you, uh, you can do that uh, as uh, illustrated here. When you define your uh, aligned uh, data type, DVEC, uh, again, you're having a, a STL vector of doubles but you're specifying to use this boost aligned allocator for doubles, uh, but aligning them to 32 byte boundaries. And this aligns the data member, but doesn't align the class itself. And in our little test programs, you can uh, use, uh, define boost align to use this allocator. You can use align class to do the alignment that, al that align the class, but not the data member. And you can use them for either the static versions or the dynamic versions by specifying dynamic. And once you've aligned the data member, you should add, you should tell the compiler that you've done so. The simplest way is to use a pragma vector aligned to tell the compiler it's safe to use aligned memory accesses for this loop. So the, the example <coughs> in the download is called sum sq. So it's calculating the sum of squares of trig functions. And if you start with the uh, <coughs> and the allocating either the static or the dy dynamic version, and you build and run it, it prints out the alignment of the class 
and it prints out the alignment of the first element of the vector. Uh, sums the squares of the elements of the vectors, and it prints the execution time. <coughs> so, the, and this is what you see if you run it in different cases. So, what we're looking for for Intel AVX or AVX2 is 32 byte alignment. <laughs> so, when you run it, if you look at the columns X and Y, that's printing out the alignment, effectively the memory address modulo 32 of the vector and of the class. And by default, you see that the alignments uh, X and Y are different, and they are not necessarily 32 byte aligned. A zero means that means that the vector is aligned or the class is aligned. By default, they are not. When you specify aligned class you uh, align the class itself, and you see then that the, for both X and Y, the class is aligned, but the vector data member still is not. You do it the other way around. You specify boost align to use the aligned memory allocator, and this indeed aligns the vector data member, but the class remains unaligned. And Following that, you see the versions where you're using dynamic memory allocation instead of static memory allocation, and the behavior is similar. Uh, we'll see more about runtimes in a moment, but I put them there just to give you an idea. So we're not talking about big factors in this case, uh, and this was a very simple loop. In fact, I think this one didn't even have the sign functions in it, as I remember. But you're seeing something a little less than 10% speed up when the data are aligned. <coughs> so let's look in a little more detail at, at what the output in the optimization report. So we're compiling. And once we, we start using these C++11 features, we need to use the switch uh, minus STD equals C++11, because the C++11 is not yet enabled by default. And we ask for the optimization report. We ask for level 3, QOPT report 3. And what we see before we, uh, before we try to align anything, we see, first of all, we see more than one entry for the loop at night, line 95. The, the first one simply says peel. <coughs> what that means is, uh, if the compiler doesn't know the data alignment, it can adjust things at runtime so that the accesses to one of the arrays or vectors is aligned just by choosing, uh, do, doing a few iterations to get up to the point where the, where the array accesses are aligned. And that's what the peel loop is. It's this dynamic adjustment. So the compiler can only adjust automatically to one, or one vector, not to both or not to more. It's too complicated. Then you see the loop kernel. And you see that the loop curl, uh, the loop is vectorized, but the, you, you get, uh, but it's vectorized. It still contains some unaligned loads. And in fact, if you would go to level four, it would tell you exactly which loads were aligned and which were unaligned. If you now add, <coughs> use the aligned memory allocator from Boost. This change, this changes, and the opt report now says uh, aligned unit stride loads, and there are two of them because there are there are two vectors, and both of them are being loaded using aligned instructions. So, <coughs> the um, in summary. The peel loop is only generated when the compiler doesn't know the alignment. 
When we specified alignment, the peel loop disappeared completely, and <coughs> we got uh, aligned loads. And accesses to data that are aligned and known to be aligned are somewhat faster than accesses to unaligned data. Uh, there's a, I have a reference here to a, a previous webinar I gave about optimization reports, which talks a little bit more about alignment, peer loops, and remainder loops, if you want to learn more. So what is the performance like? So uh, I'm taking as a reference point the default compilation with vectorization disabled, so that's minus O2, minus no vec. <coughs> In comparison, if you compile O0, it's incredibly slow. That's because at O0, there's no inlining. The, the STL is generating all these tiny function calls. At O1, it's already dramatically faster than that, but O1 is optimizing for size. So there are still some inlining restrictions and a few other thing, optimizations that are not enabled at O1. Uh, at O2, when you compare unvectorized to vectorized, you see that uh, using compiling, first of all, for SSE instructions, you get almost a factor of two speed up. So that's pretty good considering the uh, the vector register only holds two doubles. It's only two doubles wide. If you add minus x AVX, the, uh, the vector registers are wider so for floating point. So the speed up from vectorization is now uh, more than a factor of three. And that's mostly a consequence of the wider vectors. If you compile targeting AVX2, uh, the speed up is greater still, which is slightly more than four. Um, the main contribution, contribution to this is the uh, generation of fused multiply add instructions on the, on the system that supports Intel AVX2. Then when you add the alignment, you see that if you align the class in the simple-minded way, it has no impact on performance. But when you use the align allocator, so that you align the data member, you get an additional uh, small boost in performance. In this case, a little under 10%, 7 or 8%. Now, I'm going to stop here. I have a slide. When they're posted, you can look at a whole bunch of references. There's lots of online material that tells you more about uh, vectorization, simple cases, complex cases, C, Fortran, and so on.